Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ITB Berlin Convention. We're very glad that you all could join us this morning at the ITB City Tourism Forum. Uh, we're looking forward to two great and very informative sessions here together. Um, before we get started, I would like to thank our ITB Berlin Convention co-host, World Tourism Cities Federation, for their support. They've been co-hosting this gigantic event for three years in a row now. We're very thankful. Um, in case you didn't know, WTCF is a nonprofit international tourism organization <clears throat> which was formed by 128 tourism cities from 65 different countries and also 65 uh, tourism institutions like hotels, airports, um, uh, tour operators, travel agencies, um, etc. and is based out of Beijing. Um, their goal is to make better city life through tourism. So, I think that's great. We will start off this morning um, with two keynotes. The first one is by Dr. Song Rui, who is the director of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, and she will report on the world tourism economy trends of 2018. Um, then, then after that, Ms. Zenchan Terzi Bazoglu, I'm sure I didn't pronounce it right, but... <laughs> She's the special advisor to the Secretary General of the UNWTO. She will present to you um, the city tourism performance research, which was done together with the um, WTCF. Then after a short break, we will have a panel discussion with some experts, and they will discuss the new trends and um, driving forces for the Chinese tourism market. So now, without further ado, um, ladies and gentlemen, let's give Dr. Song Rui a warm welcome to the stage. Can you see me? So it's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to release the report on behalf of the WTCF and uh, the Tourism Research Center of uh, our CAS, uh, our academy. So as you may know, two years ago, we uh, two organizations uh, launched uh, this project to provide not only a general picture of the world tourism economy, but also to give you some uh, information and uh, facts on the trends of our industry. So in order to achieve these uh, objectives, we uh, collected uh, lots of data from the world and also uh, did some surveys, uh, questionnaires, and the brainstorms of the experts. So based on this analysis, uh, we found uh, that uh, our industry developed uh, with this following 10 trends uh, in the last year and maybe in the, this year. The trend first, trend one, is that the global tourism economy grow very fast and uh, comprehensively. And uh, in last year, the total global tourist arrivals here, uh, including the domestic tourist arrivals and also the international tourism uh, arrivals, both are overnight uh, arrivals, reached nearly 11.9 billion uh, and uh, that's the uh, equals to 1.6 times as the population in the world. And uh, the tourist revenue amounted uh, 5.3 trillion uh, US dollars. Uh, it's about 6.7 uh, percentage of the global GDP uh, in last year. And uh, the global tourism uh, uh, growed with a very uh, significant growth rate. So uh, the global tourist arrivals and the tourist revenue grow with 6.8 and 4.3 percentage uh, respectively last year. And uh, it's greater, it's faster than the global GDP. Uh, as you know, uh, IMF and uh, World Bank forecast the GDP in different uh, growth rate. But uh, anyhow, our industry will uh, uh, has, you know, witnessed a 
faster growth rate than the global GDP. And uh, all the five main regions witnessed growth last year, not only Europe, America, uh, of course, Asia Pacific, but also the Middle East and uh, Africa. So this uh, trend, uh, this uh, growth track will be uh, continue, will continue this year. And uh, we believe that uh, this year, the tourism uh, arrivals and the tourist uh, revenue will grow with 6.7% uh, and 5.9% respectively. The trend too, um, you know, the structure of the regional in, of our industry has been changed in the last several decades. And this pattern continued last year. Uh, for example, European share in the global market shrank in some way. American share remained, uh, and Asia Pacific share increased a little bit. Uh, that's the figures. These two uh, uh, figures shows the tourist arrivals share uh, last year and the year before last. And that's the tourist uh, revenues. We can see that in terms of the tourist revenues, those three regions uh, earned almost one third of the global tourist revenue respectively. And among the top 10 countries in terms of tourist arrivals and tourist revenue, we can see all of them come from those three regions, Europe, America, and the Asia Pacific. For example, China, India, and the USA are the top three in terms of the tourist arrivals. And the USA, China, and Germany uh, are the top three in terms of the tourist revenue. So this trend, this pattern will be more evident this year, maybe in the following future. So that's the trend two. The trend three is that compared with the developing countries, developing economics, the emerging economics witnessed a faster growth uh, last year, uh, in, in fact, the year, many years before last year, especially 2016 and 2017, we can see from these two figures that the uh, growth rate of the emerging economic uh, were higher than the tourism, than the developed uh, economics tourism. And generally speaking, emerging economy hosted a 70 percentage of the global tourists and earned a 40 percentage of the global tourist revenue. So um, this year, we believe that uh, this uh, trend will continue, that emerging economic, uh, the tourism in emerging economy will grow faster than those of developing countries, especially in terms of tourism revenue. And the trend four, uh, among the developing economics, uh, those five countries a very outstanding performance. Uh, for example, uh, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, and uh, South Africa, the BRICS, uh, those five countries uh, accounted three quarters of the total tourist arrivals of the emerging economics. And uh, the tourist uh, revenue of those five countries uh, are half of the uh, you know, the emerging countries. Uh, the trend five is tourism contributed a lot to the global trade. As you may know, in the last several years, the global trade uh, decreased in some way. Uh, last, uh, last year, it's better, it was a little bit better. But uh, tourism, the growth of tourism contributed a lot to the growth to, uh, of, the tur of the global trade. We can see from this uh, picture, from this figure. And uh, now tourism has become the largest part of the international trade in services. Its share is almost uh, one quarter. So it's, uh, it's above one quarter. And the trend six, 
the investment of, uh, in our industry also witnessed a rapid growth. Uh, we can see uh, last year it's grown uh, by 4.1 percentage and uh, among the different regions we can see that the most uh, part, the, most, the biggest part uh, come from the Asia Pacific, uh, the investment, tourism investment. And also the growth rate of this region are the high, were the highest, highest uh, of among the five great regions. And the trend uh, seven, so cities, as you know, WTCF uh, the, is an organization with the city members as the main uh, body, bodies. But uh, you know, cities played a more and more important role in our industry. Uh, for example, we collected some data uh, from uh, two, uh, uh, two thirds of the WTCF city members. It showed that uh, 87 cities have received more than uh, one fourth of the global inbound tourism. And the, the growth rate of inbound tourism and also domestic tourism of, of the WTCF members uh, was higher or higher than the global average rate. And the trend eight, uh, we collected the data from uh, f sorry, 50, 50 listed tourist companies. It showed that in the last uh, 10 years, in the last decade, uh, the compound average growth rate uh, of the listed uh, tourism company was uh, above 14 percentage. It uh, uh, kept it the same speed with the general capital market. And we can see the, the market value of the listed tourism companies are different uh, in terms of different sectors of uh, our industry. Uh, the transportation companies with the biggest share, but the travel uh, agencies are more, you know, uh, uh, fluctuant. And uh, hope in the uh, we be, uh, we founded that the operational profit margins of the uh, travel agencies are more. You know, uh, unstable compared to other subsectors. Uh, 29, we found that our industry has been changed by the new technologies. Uh, last, uh, we selected uh, several, uh, eight uh, new technologies to uh, analyze uh, their impacts. For example, as you know, AI increased the uh, has increased the operation efficiency of tourism. Uh, tourism uh, was one of the main sector for the VR, AR application. The blockchain is a very, you know, is a buzzword, a, a, especially in China now. And the, the blockchain will change the payment system, the credit system, the service system of our industry. And the human computer interaction technology will affect our industry. The new energy uh, revolution uh, will increase, will support, will help the sustainable tourism. And GIS technology and the Internet of Things and also the cloud computing. Uh, we believe not only those uh, eight, but um, maybe also big data or some other new technology will change our industry. We should uh, notice that. The last but not least, our industry also facing, are facing some challenges. Last year, we analyzed the challenges of, you know, as uh, trade protectionism, ter terrorism. This year, we are focusing on the challenges of human capital. Uh, we found that the fast growth compared with the fast growth of our industry, the employment uh, not you know keep up with this speed. So um, 
among 46 countries, 37 of them uh, review uh, that they will they would encounter shortage of human capital in our industry, uh, but only six countries would have this problem in the national economy. So that means the tourism industry, which needs more severe uh, challenge of in terms of human capital compared with other industries, and uh, we all we noticed the fast growth of the tourism industry in this main, uh, you know, destinations. But we found that the employment uh, of tourism industry in those countries, you know, maybe in some, in some year, maybe it even decreased. So every most of the countries are confronting with these challenges, not only the shortage of the human capital, but also the structure of our uh, workforce uh, in this industry. For example, the high-end management and technology talents are especially insufficient. And uh, we noticed that the tourism has, start, uh, has started to change from a labor-intensive industry to a capital-intensive and also technology-intensive and also creativity-intensive industry. So this will change the structure. It will need uh, the, you know, the change in the construction of the structure of the human uh, resources. And also, our industry suffer from the high mobilities. Sometimes it's a problem. It's a, but sometimes it's also, you know, uh, opportunity. So, but we should notice that this, um, you know, flow out. Uh, of the employment uh, of our industry should be noticed and treated. And uh, so, and also in, within the tourism industry, human resources also flow from the traditional tourism industry to the new tourism industry. Uh, we give the example uh, of China. We can see that the distribution of tourism of, you know, the tourism industry has changed. So that's all we found that those 10 trends uh, will impact on, have some kind of impacts on our in industry. We should be ready for all of these trends. Uh, we believe that our industry will have a more, uh, have a better future uh, with the efforts of all our industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, good morning. It's working. Good morning, everybody. I'm really honored and I'm very pleased to be invited by the world, uh, our friends from <laughs> World Tourism Cities Federation. And uh, we conducted uh, a report with them, together with them, with their support. And I'm very pleased to, to present this report, the results of the survey here. Uh, my name is Essen because it's a bit complicated for you. I worked in World Tourism Organization for 17 years and since two months I'm a retired person. Now I'm helping the new Secretary General in, in my area which is destination management and quality. So before I move on to the content and the first the methodology of, of our report, which is published here. I have the output here that I'm very pleased to show it to you. I just wanted to identify some of the key points why urban tourism is important. By the way, in the UN WTO, we call it urban tourism now rather than city tourism because we believe that it encompasses a bigger area 
because now there is a sort of trend that we have to decentralize the congestion which is happening in the city centers. So we rather call it urban tourism with its dynamics uh, which are more uh, relevant uh, to, the, to the activities of, of uh, which is happening in terms of tourism. So we have to position tourism on the urban area because on the urban agenda because urban agenda and tourism activities they have to go together. They can't be isolated from each other. And this is a very important effort that has to be shown by the local authorities together with the tourism stakeholders. Because we all know that in many cities, the local authorities, they do not consider tourism as a very you know, important activity, although it really helps the development of the local community as well as the space of that city environment. And on the other hand, the tourism stakeholders really do not have the authority or the force to convince their municipalities or their central governments that these tourism activities are really the key for the growth of the local community. Now, we have a lot of opportunities in urban tourism. First, we know that the volume of global urban tourism demand has grown by more than 50% during the last decade. It is becoming a huge market. It is growing because we know that urbanization rate is very high still, even in developed countries. And we know that cities accommodate more than 54.5% of the world population. And UN Habitat says that in, by 2025, only 600 cities from the world will generate approximately the 65% of the world economic growth. So this is really an important figure. And of course, we know that there is increased global mobility, information boom, and uh, people like short break destinations with diversified attractions and etc. So this is an attraction for urban tourism. Cities contribute to global tourism because we all, there is evidence that approximately 80% of the tourists are generated from cities. I mean, 80% of the cities living in a different part of the world, they go to, an, to visit another city. So also, cities contribute to global tourism in that sense. City tourism or urban tourism, it constitutes a central component in economy, social life, and the geography urban area, uh, in urban areas, because it is an economic activity, obviously. And also, it creates spatial dynamics, thanks to tourism, that we invest in the rejuvenation of the city. We invest in improving our infrastructure. We invest in uh, improving our public space, and so on. Also, we have to thank to the tourism industry for this. Now, our project, actually, we call it Urban City Tourism Performance. It was to create, a, the aim was to create a platform to exchange information, experience, and expertise among the leading urban tourism destinations across the globe. In the World Tourism Organization, unfortunately or fortunately, we don't like ranking. So, because we have 157 member states and so many destination management organizations, so we do not measure, let's say, competitiveness of any destination so that we can rank it. Because we have to embrace them all and politically it is not very relevant to our mission. So, the methodology of this, day, uh, the, this uh, work was actually based on identifying some key performance areas for the cities that we elected globally, and they were about destination management, economic perspective, social and cultural perspective, environmental perspective, and also technology and new business models. So, I will not go into the details. So, we have selected some experts uh, 15 experts actually we worked with, and we sent them to the destinations that we elected, the destination management organizations of the cities that I'm going to show you now. So they made in-situ interviews by the DMOs and all the stakeholders. They drafted reports with empirical data and observations, 
and uh, we arranged, we organized two technical workshops to discuss about the recommendations to some cities at regional level. The first one was uh, organized in Tianjin City, China, and the second one in Buenos Aires. And then they sent us the full reports, and then we made the summary of reports to be able to make this publication. And also all the reports, full reports, and this publication is on our website, and I imagine it's also on the website of World City, Tourism Cities Federation. Now the partner cities, we attached importance to an even geographical distribution, but in fact, there is no very specified criterion for electing the cities. Some of them voluntarily approached us, and some of them we offered them to, to be involved in this study. As you see, we have Tokyo, Beijing, you know, huge metropolitan cities where they have a different scale, they have different products, different organizations, and also we have cities like Antwerp, Linz, and Torino in Europe, for example. So there is not one fits all approach in here, but every city they showed their strengths and also then we analyzed some challenges that I will mention. I will not go into the details which city actually showed what, because I think this presentation will also be published here, so you can see it there. Now I want to go uh, to mention about some strengths that each city showed, so that this can be an, exper uh, uh, an experience for other cities and also a good, good story or success story. If we start with Antwerp in Belgium, which is not a big city obviously, but it is very well connected in terms of, uh, you know, connectivity is very important. It is a competitive advantage for any destination. And because of its geographical location and because of its development uh, level, of course, connectivity is one of the strengths of Antwerp. They have a well-organized transport network and infrastructure. Their governance model at city level is very efficient. They really embark on vertical and horizontal coordination, like with the central government, with the regional government, and also among the stakeholders. They really work very efficiently. They have launched a long-term strategic planning for tourism. Uh, they have an integrated marketing approach, which is not very marginal. The local community is very positive for tourism. As I will mention in, in some of the cases that there is sometimes sort of conflict. It may be an artificial conflict though uh, now in, in, in recent times between the local community and the visitors, but Antwerp is welcoming the visitors. Tourism sector is totally involved in urban development and planning, so they work together. This is a very positive aspect so that you can, as I have mentioned, so that you can have the same objectives and you can face the same challenges afterwards. They really placed uh, uh, regulations and monitoring practices for quality management, which is one of the other competitiveness factors for, for any destination. They have efficient information technology use. They maintain their authenticity. This is an effort shown by the Antwerp City. Accessibility and social inclusiveness is also a factor. They really uh, work on this. And uh, they can monitor the environmental sustain sustainability, which doesn't happen in every city, by the way. They can monitor, they can measure the congestion management, public space, energy efficiency, greenhouse gas emission, etc. Of course, this does not come from tourism. Uh, but tourism is affected by these factors. So it is very important at local level if you can monitor these factors. Now Beijing, our uh, expert for Beijing was Dr. Song, and she did an excellent report on Beijing that you can see on our website. As you see, Beijing is a huge, I don't know the population exactly now, I remember it's a huge metropolitan, I must say, uh, area, but also very, very good uh, tourism destination. They are doing very well. Of course, they have the, the natural and cultural uh, attractions, obviously, but this is the competitive uh, uh, factor or advantage, but it is very important how you deploy these resources and how you look into the future. Uh, 
So first they have embarked on the connectivity that there is a new airport now uh, under construction, which is I think that it is going to be opened in 2019. They are improving the urban public transport. The accommodation is very diversified. I mean, it is from the very high end to the any, any, any consumer can benefit. The culinary experience is like a synthesis of Chinese cuisine. So in, in Beijing, you can eat any uh, food from different parts of the world, representing the different parts of, sorry, China. So it is like a synthesis of uh, um, uh, gastronomic experience. The DMO is in fact under the municipal government and it is called Tourism Commission. It is a multi-agency effort and they have designed now a strategic five-year development plan and they have put really very, very concrete and very uh, uh, promising uh, uh, vision in, the, in this document. And they have also introduced sustainable tourism initiatives in this plan. So this structure is, uh, is very consistent with the objectives and it allows for an integrated approach for tourism development in terms of vertical and horizontal coordination with the other stakeholders because they can be this structure Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so there, the, the government has a very strong and systematic support to tourism in Beijing, the, the, the uh, Beijing uh, municipal government. So they can do very easily land allocation, they can control the taxation, they can finance, they can improve the infrastructure, public services, small and medium entrepreneurship is very well supported and they give incentives for innovation. So it is a very good case and very promising case, Beijing, and the report is very detailed. So for every city, we also had some success stories on a project basis, so you can, you can see them on our we website. Berlin was another city that I think you, some people from Berlin here. Well, in Berlin, of course, it is a it is a very uh, historical destination that is a mature destination as well. But we have found out from the, uh, we picked from the report that tourism benefits from other important sectors like life sciences, they call it, from transportation, IT, media and music, advertising and design here, very important, biotechnology, environmental services, construction, e-commerce, retail, etc. So to tourism, benefits from this and these sectors also benefit from tourism because they, they, they are interactive. The transport infrastructure is very well advanced, the accommodation is very diversified and they have a strong brand identity. Berlin has a place brand which is very important in you know, Berlin. They have a very efficient governance model, they are practicing sustainable uh, strategies, uh, the impact of tourism is quite high and uh, they also developed meetings industry very well and so on. And they do a very good market intelligence. Bogota is, uh, is a city, you know, it's also a very chaotic and huge city in Colombia, but they have really put in place, they, they think tourism is very important after oil, it is the second export industry for them. So they are attaching utmost importance to tourism and the local government is really placing sustain, like environmental friendly, for example, urban mobility. They are developing bicycle routes, which are really in very, you know, in, in good terms, very good operational and very useful. And they are using the hinterland for complementary attractions. So that when the visitor comes to the city, they also uh, promote some other attractions in the hinterland and by this way they can also avoid some congestion in the city centre. They are uh, promoting gastronomy tourism and they're also now promoting uh, business tourism and meetings industry. So I don't want to go into detail but they have also developed a comprehensive strategic and action tourism plan which focuses on innovation, inclusiveness, smart tourism, authenticity, sustainability and quality. And they, have, they are doing a quality systems management. So they have put this in place and they're doing certification systems when 
they consider the, the, the service and the, the product in quality. Buenos Aires, again, from uh, South America. It is a different uh, city, as you all know. Also, they are attaching utmost importance to technology. They're using big data. And uh, it is really amazing how they work in the, in the municipality. The, the, uh, the, DMO, uh, is, uh, the DMO is under the local authority. So they have developed, they are very good in LGTB market. It is number one destination in, in the region. They are promoting shopping tourism, health and wellness tourism, and their DMO structure, although it is totally public, it belongs to the municipality, but they are really doing collective work with the stakeholders. They have long-term strategic destination management plan, and they are keeping their authenticity and they're using it as their unique selling point. And connectivity is being improved as well. And we were very amazed when we organized the workshop there that they are really improving the smart city initiatives. Cape Town was again one of the best reports we had, although now I think they are suffering a little bit problem of lack supply of uh, water supply. And there is some I don't know, some things going on there, but in, in terms of governance, the objectives, the city is doing very well, um, thanks to their rich and diversified natural cultural resources, and also, but they have developed uh, their tourism infrastructure uh, properly. They have really diversified tourism products for different market segments, and they are very keen about this. So they don't, don't target one market or two or three markets, I mean, market segments, I must say, but they really diversify their products very successfully. And their DMO structure, which is public-private partnership model, is very, very efficient. And they have developed le a legal framework and action plans for sustainable growth and management, including climate change. They can monitor it. There is really public awareness about this and uh, uh, about energy efficiency and inclusiveness. I hope they can just cope with this uh, water supply issue and it will not affect their tourism. It is, in fact, for the time being, it is being affected. And they uh, attach importance to research, innovation and authenticity. So Copenhagen is another city that we studied. Uh, again, they have a very, you know, sustainable city brand. It is being used as a, it is a competitive advantage in promotion and marketing. They have a very ambitious climate policy. And uh, it is, they say that that is the first carbon neutral capital. Uh, they have also developed environmental friendly uh, urban uh, mobility and they use, as all, you all know, extensive bicycle use. They have developed routes for these uh, environmental friendly urban mobility systems. And of course, on the other hand, they have well developed public transport infrastructure. It is also a cruise destination, so they may have some challenges for that, but they, it also helps being a cruise destination, using this cruise tourism as a stopover and the, the visitor can see the city. Their city DMO is, is efficient and they can provide vertical coordination with the DMO at national level. City brand is based on in Copenhagen, architecture and design, sustainable city, healthy food, tolerance, small scale, big city. So this is really very, I think this can be an example to other cities, it's very well done. They have revised their strategic plan, so they have put as an input like sustainable and livable city, smart city, professionalism and talent development, local resident involvement in decision making. So uh, these are the components that they have uh, included in their strategic plan. And of course they have sustainability practices like eco-certification in accommodation, organic food, environmental friendly urban mobility, etc. <coughs> Hangzhou, China was another one. So tourism is a priority on the urban policy uh, of Hangzhou. It is one of the very important uh, city destinations in China, as you all know. They have a very diversified and highly developed tourism attractions. 
significant historical cultural character they have. And the tourism product is very well diversified to meet leisure, events, and so on. And they have an advantage. They don't have any seasonality issue. And they want to keep their authenticity. Linz, Austria is another city, which is not a big city. But of course, they have done a lot of uh, work to make their uh, city as a uh, well-known uh, tourism destination. It is, uh, they are uh, uh, launching more uh, like small, uh, smart city and innovative hard product development, space for art, culture, etc. They have well developed connectivity and being a European capital of culture in 2009 really helped them to make a transition. In the past, they had a different strategy and that, that was not a very well known tourism destination, but now it has become really a very one of the important tourism destinations in Europe. So I don't want to go into the detail. The other case was Marrakesh. Marrakesh, as you know, in Morocco. They also have a DMO, which is quite independent, but they have good connection with the central government. They have also developed a, a regional development plan where they put the objectives like authenticity, diversification of economic activities and sectorial plans. And also they have developed the involvement of the local community in tourism. So uh, they are uh, providing incentives and training programs to the small and medium-sized entrepreneurs so that they can be really incorporated in the tourism sector. So I don't want to go into details. The other one was Sapporo in Japan. Here it is very, the, the strange thing is that it is not an urban destination, but it has become an urban destination as combined with mountain tourism. So they are, those who are visiting Sapporo for mountain uh, sports, etc. they also uh, use the destination with its characteristics as the uh, urban destination. So I will not go into detail because I want to talk about some challenges as well. Seoul uh, in, in Korea, they, the report was really very good indeed. And urban hinterland is largely used for nature-based tourism. Now they are a little bit um, concerned about congestion in recent years. So they are doing a sort of uh, new strategic plans to diversify the space, to decentralize uh, the, the product or the attractions so that people will not be congested. And also they have uh, really done a lot of uh, work about uh, digital technology, digital social innovation. Uh, it is considered to be a smart city as well, both for the local residents and the visitors. And we know that urban planning and design aligns with tourism product development, which is again a very positive aspect. Um, and a strong global city brand is a city of design. Again, Seoul is considered to be a, a city of design. One very in important uh, aspect for or positive thing about Seoul is that uh, the local authority they have uh, uh, considered a social inclusiveness as a very important thing. So, in their decision making process, they have built some committees where you have. Uh, they consider the gender equality, involvement of the elderly, the elder people also, they have some role in decision taking how this city is going to be in, in 10 years time. Disabled people, all traditional merchants, foreigners, small business, they all put them in different committees so that they have a say in, in tourism management as well. So uh, this is it. And Tianjin, is very important. They, it's a growing city in terms of a, as a tourism destination. They have very well uh, connectivity. It's close to Beijing. And uh, also they are uh, trying to uh, initiate their mice or meetings industry. Tokyo, as you know, I don't have to. Tokyo is another city which is very big, but also uh, the, the thing there is the advantages. They don't have seasonality issue. They don't, I, I'm so sorry, I have small. So I will not, Torino has made that. I will just uh, talk about very, very basically a little bit about the challenges. Now, when we were doing this, pro this project, first of all, at city level, it is very difficult to get relevant quantitative and qualitative data. So if you are representing t cities, we really request from you to, to embark on uh, reliable data. I mean, you have to collect data and analyze this data. 
and some environmental issues we witnessed in the cities, but these are not necessarily caused by tourism, like congestion, public space, energy efficiency, and so on. These are the challenges. We also saw in some cities mobility performance difficulties. Connectivity was one issue. In some cities, the org the uh, local governments, they are not providing support to the small and business, uh, medium-sized enterprises, which is the essential part of tourism. Tourism is not included in the urban growth policies. There is need for product diversification. And the cities need to improve their city brand by including the community concept. The community sometimes is ignored totally. Seasonality is an issue. Lack of quality management systems is an issue, and limited quality accommodation capacity to meet the demand is an issue. There is need to develop responsible cruise tourism because cruise tourism in cities like, for example, Barcelona is suffering from cruise tourism, not from city tourism, by the way. And also you have to ensure ongoing innovation and capacity. You have to have uh, a long-term political stability as well. Safety and security in cities is an issue. Price competitiveness is another one. And there is no legal framework in every urban destination for new digital platforms. I'm talking about the sharing economy. We now call it uh, new digital platforms in the World Tourism Organization. This is another subject. We even included a study in this book about this. We allocated resources. There is a uh, study on this but we don't position ourselves uh, not against, but not in, even in favor. There are detrimental effects. Tourism can destroy tourism. Touristification and erosion of quality. Authenticity is an issue. And there is always need for more flexible government. So I don't want to talk about new platform tourism services. We also did a survey on this, and then we found out that we need key pillars for this fair competition, consumer protection, work conditions, planning and sustainability aspects. So this is it. So I think this uh, presentation will be online. This is our uh, publication, which uh, includes all these reports, the summary of the reports, and this is it. So thank you very much. Sorry for a little bit of talking. Thank you.